I'm using an ordinary kit of corn stalks and turning it into a fantastic cornfield for my model railroad, and I'm starting right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and I've been building a farm scene on my model railroad layout, and today I'm creating a cornfield for that scene. Now, I'm starting with Blueford Shops cornfields, which are some great kits of mass corn stalks, but out of the box, they're pretty monotone in color and just lack a little bit of life and realism. Well, today I'm going to show you some techniques that I use to turn these ordinary corn stalks into a beautiful, realistic cornfield. So let's head on over to the workbench and get started. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. These are Blueford Shop's in-scale cornfields. They also make these in HO scale, and you can use the same techniques that I'm using here today to create great looking cornfields in HO as well. Again, I'm using two of these kits to create a large cornfield. Here is a manufacturer's image showing a cornfield created straight from the box, but I'm going to take some steps to step up the realism of my cornfield a few notches. Removing the parts from the box, you see we have a bunch of sprues, each with four corn rows. Each row has 20 corn stalks. Step one is to cut out all of these corn stalks. Each row has four injection gates on the base and one on the top of every single corn stalk. That means I had to cut each of the 2,240 corn stalks in these two kits from the sprue. I began by using my flush cutting tweezers, but after a while that was causing my hand to cramp, so I looked for a different approach, which you'll see in just a minute. I sanded the base of each row lightly to smooth out the bottom. You see here how each row has mounting pins on one side and mounting holes on the other molded in. This would allow the rows to fit together neatly and easily, but again, as you'll see in a moment, I took a different approach. But for now, I just kept cutting, and cutting, and cutting, until my hand was too sore to continue. It was then that I decided to try cutting the corn stalks with a sharp hobby knife. I tried dragging the blade along, cutting each one free as it worked along the row, but it worked much better to press and shear the stalks with the knife one at a time. It's important to leave as much of the top or tassel on each corn stalk as possible. Ultimately, I ended up cutting the bases from the sprues with a knife as well. It was just easier in this case. There was so much cutting to do that it took me two and a half hours just to cut out all the parts. Once that was finally done, it was time to paint the corn. The plants are molded in green, but they're just too uniform in color and too shiny and plastic looking to be realistic. So I first painted the plants with a Christmas green craft paint. I thinned the paint about 10% with water and painted with a small, soft, flat brush. I wasn't worried about neatness here. I wanted to get some paint on each plant, but I wanted some of the original lighter green to show through as well to create a texture. So I brushed each plant with the paint using an upward stroke mostly and moved rather quickly. After painting both sides, I laid each row out on a paper towel to dry. I let the green paint dry for a couple hours. Then I painted the top of the base with a light brown dirt color. I plan to cover these with dirt texture later, but I didn't want a lot of this green base color showing through. So I thought it better to roughly paint them now. Again, I wasn't super careful with this paint, although I was taking care not to get the paint on the corn itself. I got plenty on the sides of the base for sure, but I generally covered up the top, which was the main priority here. I could have showed you hours of footage here as these preparation steps, cutting out the parts and painting, took 10 hours over the course of three evenings altogether. After the earth paint had dried, I painted the tassels on each corn stalk. I'm modeling mid-summer on my layout when the corn would be tasseling, so I used a flat, medium to light yellow to paint the tassels. In my case, I used Vallejo's model color number 70.953 flat yellow. 
and more pale yellow might have looked even better. I used a tiny 18-aught spotting brush for this step. Such small amounts of paint will dry on the brush rather quickly, so I wiped the paint off of my brush on a paper towel after every row, and I cleaned my brush often. To steady my hands for this delicate painting, I rested the fingertips of my brush hand on the fingertips of the hand that held the row. This way, if my hands shook at all, they at least would shake together. I simply touched the brush to the top tassel part of each cornstalk to produce a yellow tassel. Of course, I had to paint both sides of every row. After everything was painted and dried, it was time to think about assembly. As I mentioned, each row in this kit has alignment pins and holes molded in. You can see here how the rows are intended to be assembled. The problem with this method is that it creates straight rows in both directions. Cornfields are planted in rows, but if you look across the rows, the corn should look more randomly placed. To get a more realistic look, I altered the placement of every other row. This meant that I would have to work a little harder at assembling the rows, but the look was so much more realistic that it had to be done. Now, before I assemble the cornfield, let me say that if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques to help you build your dream layout, then be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I wanted this cornfield to have a more interesting shape than simply a square or a rectangle. I went to the location of the farm scene on my layout and used a piece of paper to fold and cut to the form and shape that I wanted. I was careful to keep the total area to less than 39 square inches, which is how much corn I had. The backdrop curves slightly here, and I ran the fence on the right side at an angle that matched the slope of the hill adjacent to it. I took this paper template back to the workbench to figure out the placement of the corn. A typical cornfield will have parallel rows over the course of the field, with one planter's width of rows running perpendicular to the other rows on each end. These perpendicular rows cover the area where the tractor and planter turn around on the main passes. Realistically, these end strips would be somewhere in the vicinity of eight rows wide, but this field is unprototypically small, so I compressed this feature to only four rows. I assembled what I could of the offset rows with the mounting pins, but I had to cut the mounting pins off of the offset parts and just glued these parts together. I started by assembling the cross rows on the ends, planning to fill in the main field in between them. I'm not sure exactly what kind of plastic this corn is made from, but solvent cement would not work on it. I had hoped to simply glue the bases together with solvent cement, but that didn't work, so I assembled the field by gluing all of the rows onto the paper template. For this, I used Beacon 3-in-1 glue. This has become one of my favorite adhesives for many scenery applications, as it dries completely clear and it sticks to nearly anything. I highly recommend it, and I've linked this glue in my Amazon Pick of the Week in the description below this video if you'd like to check it out. I applied the glue to the bottom of the assembled offset section and glued it to the paper. Then I cut the rows to length to fit between these pieces and glued them in place. I repeated the same process on the other end of the field. With the end rows glued in place, I began assembling the main offset section of the field. At this point, I simply press fit the rows together using the mounting pins and holes. When I had the offset section assembled, I cut off the mounting pins on the ends of the offset rows to allow the filler rows to fit in later. I glued just the overlapping parts to the template. The filler rows would hold the outer portions of the offset rows in place. When the main section was glued down, I began cutting and installing the filler rows. On the front right of the field, a second row of filler rows would be necessary to fully fill in the field. It isn't crucial that every row be perfectly placed. Again, a little bit of randomness will only add to the realism of the field. As I installed these filler rows, I used the point of my hobby knife to press each row into place and into the glue. As I cut the filler rows, there were numerous short pieces of various lengths left over. 
I was able to use some of these to create a few of the filler rows. The rest I saved with the idea of modeling a garden with some sweet corn elsewhere in this farm scene. As the field filled in, I realized just how much I was going to like this part of the scene. When I was finished with the field, I had 11 full rows of corn left, plus the leftover short pieces. I planned to use this to fill in along the backdrop on the left side of this field, suggesting an L-shaped cornfield extending out of sight behind the barn, but I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. I let the glue set overnight. Then I wanted to add a little ground texture to the base around the edges as well as to the white paper that shows through when you look down on the field. The field will be on my upper deck so people shouldn't be looking down upon the scene, but I didn't want to take any chances by not covering up those white patches. For ground texture, I use real sifted dirt mixed 50-50 with tan, unsanded tile grout. This is a pretty common texture material used by many modelers, including Luke Towen, and it looks great. I fix it in place with matte Mod Podge diluted 50-50 with water. Somehow, the video clip that I filmed applying the dirt got lost, but I simply sifted it over the entire field through an old stocking. A little of the dirt stuck to the corn due to static electricity, but I lightly rubbed my fingers over the corn stalks and this knocked the dirt right off. I then used a pipette to apply some isopropyl alcohol as a wetting agent and then applied the glue. Here you see that stage. There were a few plants with some small globs of Mod Podge stuck to them, so that I removed with a small paintbrush. I wanted the field to dry as flat as possible without sticking to a paper towel or to my workbench, so I slipped a sheet of wax paper under it. I knew the field would stick to the wax paper, but I could simply cut the wax paper around the edge of the field and bury it in the scenery. After the glue had dried for 24 hours, I test fit the field into the scene. Again, I had enough corn rows left over to add a narrow strip at the rear left of the field. I thought this would add some visual interest to the field's shape. With a little experimentation, I decided that eight rows would accomplish this purpose and still leave a little corn for the garden. I made these rows just one kit row long and assembled them in the same offset manner that I had done before. I cut the shorter filler rows before I assembled anything. I laid out the rows in the order that I wanted to assemble them. This time, I did not use any backing material, but simply glued the rows together using the same three-in-one glue. For this small section of field, this process worked fine. I made sure the corn stalks were plumb vertically and cut the base at the ends to make them straight. I test fit this small section in place. The larger field did not dry perfectly flat. This is not a problem as farm fields and the earth generally is not perfectly flat and I'll weigh it down when I glue it in place, but I'm not ready to glue it in place yet. I could tell, however, that this small piece was going to need a bit of a shim to level it with a larger field. So I cut a scrap of 40,000th styrene and glued it to the bottom. This seemed to fix the problem just fine. And here is the completed cornfield. Again, I'm not quite ready to glue it into the scene, but once I do, I blend it in with some sculpta mold. I'll add some ground texture, some grass around the perimeter, and a fence. I think it's going to look absolutely superb. I'm really excited about how the various elements of this farm scene are coming together. So to see how I model this complete farm scene and other great Model Railroad content, check out the links on your screen. Be sure and check out my Amazon Pick of the Week, my Micromark discount code, and other great links in the description down below. And join me on Tuesdays as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I'll see you on the next video. Tim Lizzie?